Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This will be my Game of Thrones, A Night of the Seven Kingdoms trailer video for the new series they just announced. HBO just officially ordered A Night of the Seven Kingdoms 2 series as like the next big Game of Thrones prequel they're doing. I'll explain what's going on, where it fits in the timeline, and what their plan is for how they're going to adapt the book material for this story. George R. R. Martin was talking a lot about this. He is heavily involved in writing the episodes right now. So it's not like they're just making up a whole bunch of stuff on their own. It's kind of the same way that they built House of the Dragon with George R. R. Martin helping them build out the stories because the original book material for that stories is relatively scarce. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Of course, I'll do episode videos for it when it premieres. I'll explain what the timeline is for that too. But if you haven't read the books, A Night of the Seven Kingdoms is the name for the collected series of novellas about the adventures of Sir Duncan the Tall and Aegon the Fifth Targaryen, affectionately known as the Tales of Duncan Egg. But George R. R. Martin already said, we're not going to call the show Tales of Duncan Egg because that would make it sound like a sitcom. Which does sound kind of funny, like HBO doing a Game of Thrones sitcom series. Do I say something? Is it me? What do I say? What? Oh, we've got to there already. We... Hey, f sorry. One of the major differences, though, just in the way the show would feel, the way it would work from, say, House of the Dragon right now or the main show Game of Thrones is that it mostly just follows Sir Duncan the Tall and Aegon the Fifth when he was a boy serving as Duncan's squire about 90 years before the events of the main show. So whereas House of the Dragon in the original Game of Thrones series follow this massive cast of characters and there's no like one single main character like Jon Snow and Daenerys are arguably the two biggest characters but that was really only right at the end and you could argue for most of the shows all the characters were an ensemble together. During A Night of the Seven Kingdoms, Dunk and Egg are the de facto main characters. Now there are a lot of other really important characters to the story but it mostly follows those two. It picks up just after the first Blackfire Rebellion, so we're about 80 years after the Dance of the Dragons, which they're starting on House of the Dragon right now. So it's a couple of generations after the characters we're watching on House of the Dragon right now. Pretty much all those characters would be dead by this time, including those dragons. Because one of the other really notable things about this period in history is that it picks up about 50 or 60 years after the death of the last dragon that belonged to the Targaryen family while they still sat on the Iron Throne. We know Daenerys' dragons were eventually hatched from some stolen dragon eggs taken from Dreamfire many, many years earlier when Dreamfire was still alive. We actually saw her in the dragon pit during House of the Dragon Season 1 when Aemon tried to prove himself by actually claiming a dragon from the pit itself. Later, Dreamfire winds up being ridden by Helena, who has dragon dreams. So Dreamfire, dragon dreams, you get the association there. But for about 150 years, there were no dragons alive. There were dragon eggs, because we know about Daenerys' dragon eggs, but none of them had hatched. The major conflicts during A Night of the Seven Kingdoms in the realm, just during this period in history, are the Second Blackfire Rebellion. The Blood Raven is very active before he became the Three-Eyed Raven. He's also one of the Targaryen bastards who's related to Maester Aemon, who is also very active at this point in history. Maester Aemon was actually the older brother of Aegon V, the egg in the title, Duncan Egg. He actually mentions Egg when he lay dying during the Game of Thrones series. Egg? I dreamed that I was old. The funny thing about Maester Aemon, he actually told this to Jon Snow during the early seasons of Game of Thrones when Jon Snow was getting worked up about what was happening with the War of the Five Kings. Maester Aemon had to set him straight like, look kid, I've been through this before. I had to watch all my family die and meet horrible ends. But because they had taken the black, Maester Aemon was trying to tell him, no, you can't rush to help out. You took the black. You took an oath. Maester Aemon was supposed to ascend to the Iron Throne. Remember, he's Aegon V's older brother, so he was ahead of him in the line of succession. Their oldest brother had died from the pox, and their second oldest brother was Arian Targaryen, the one who infamously died after drinking a cup of wildfire, claiming that it would transform him into a dragon. So when Aemon was going to officially be recognized as the heir apparent, he formally took the black, becoming a maester to the Night's Watch because he didn't want another situation like the Dance of the Dragons to come around again, where it turned into a battle of succession within the family again. Like, he didn't want to have to fight his brother for the Iron Throne again. And that's how Egg from Tales of Duck and Egg became Aegon V. But that didn't happen until many, many years later in his lifetime. Pretty much everything that they would cover in a Night of the Seven Kingdoms series, even through like four or five seasons, would be when he's a young boy. But the idea is that there are still a lot of conflicts, a lot of really big things, and really important figures in the realm during this period, even though it seems like a relatively chill period within the Targaryen family. 
We had the later Blackfire Rebellions, a very young Maester Aemon, like the Chad version of Maester Aemon, the Chad version of the Blood Raven, and the boy, Aegon, who would eventually become Aegon V, ascending to the Iron Throne when he was much older. If they do wind up doing the first Blackfire Rebellion, they might do that as its own show, just because so much happens during that period. You could turn that into like four or five seasons of its own show, but it feels almost just like what they're doing right now with the Dance of the Dragons, which is probably why they're skipping past it. Maybe they'll circle back around or do it in some flashbacks during the upcoming Night of the Seven Kingdoms series. Like, they'll probably refer to it because it's relatively recent after the first Blackfire Rebellion when the series picks up. Assuming there aren't a bunch of big time jumps during A Night of the Seven Kingdoms, the first Blackfire Rebellion was about 15 years before Season 1 would begin. That Blackfire Rebellion started because King Aegon IV sired a ton of bastards, like more bastards than Robert Baratheon did, legitimized a bunch of them, and his favorite one, the most powerful one named Daemon, took the name Blackfire after he'd been legitimized, the same name as Aegon the Conqueror's Valyrian Blade, which had been passed down since Aegon the Conqueror from king to king and was intended to be a sign of right to rule, like each king would eventually pass it to the heir apparent. Eventually, Aegon IV gave the Valyrian sword Blackfire to his bastard Daemon instead of his legitimate heir, Daron II. They wound up fighting a bitter war over the Iron Throne that was the first Blackfire Rebellion, then eventually the second Blackfire Rebellion, which does happen during A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. Like, we'd actually see a verse that play out during A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. That was Daemon and some of the other Blackfire children who had come back from Essos after they'd formed the Golden Company. That's basically what happens with a lot of bastards from Westeros, is the Golden Company is made up of a lot of highborn bastards from Westeros or people who are exiled. So during the second Blackfire Rebellion, it's a lot of the same energy, but it's just Daemon's children and people from the Golden Company. George R. R. Martin just did a big blog post explaining what's going on, what their plan is for adapting the books, and how many episodes they're going to do per season, how many seasons they have planned. He said that each season would be about six episodes, so it's a bit of a shorter episode count, but there's less book material to adapt, and right now they have at least three seasons planned, which would adapt each of the three Duncan Egg novellas that he has already written. He did say he planned on writing more Duncan Egg stories, so it does sound like they want to go for like four, maybe even five seasons, but the episode count would stay a little bit shorter. The first season would adapt the first novella, which is called Hedge Knight. He did say that the title of the show would probably change. Like right now, HBO has the longest title in the history of show titles ever, and they're just using it as a working title. So they might just call the show The Hedge Knight. But that's the story of how Aegon became Sir Duncan the Tall's squire and how Sir Duncan the Tall became a knight. There's a whole bunch of drama they get up to in the story, like it all goes down at this famous tourney called the Tourney at Ashford, where a bunch of people wind up dying, there's a lot of chaos in the line of succession, a whole bunch of shit just goes down. They also do something really cool that they haven't done on any of the shows yet. They actually have a trial by seven, like the seven gods of the faith of the seven. We've seen trial by combat before, which is two parties either fighting each other over an actual trial that they're having, like someone is accusing someone else of something, with the defendant having a chance to win their freedom if he can kill the accuser or force them to submit, or they both choose champions like Tyrion and Cersei, each choosing Oberyn Martell in the mountain to fight in their stead. But trial by combat is just a one-on-one -on -one thing. Trial by seven is a full-on seven-on-seven, so you have 14 people on the field of battle just fighting it out. The terms of victory are the same, though. The winner is the last man standing. One of the other interesting things about Sir Duncan the Tall is that he's also the ancestor of Brienne of Tarth, and his story, especially initially in his life, is very similar to Brienne's in that her only wish in her entire life is just to become a knight, and she eventually becomes the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard to Bran. Basically, the same thing happens with Sir Duncan the Tall, where he never knew his parents, he was raised in Flea Bottom as an orphan, and during that period, it was almost impossible to become a knight if you weren't of noble birth. Eventually, he's able to start out as a squire to a hedge knight, thus the title of the Sir Book, named Sir Arlen Pennytree, who teaches him sword fighting, how to take care of horses, all the basic skills you need to be a knight. Then the story takes a very Knight's Tale kind of turn. If you remember that movie, A Knight's Tale with Heath Ledger, the story of Sir Duncan the Tall plays out a little bit like Heath Ledger's story in that movie. We're on the way to the Tourney at Ashford, this very famous tourney where all this drama goes down. Sir Arlen winds up dying, and Sir Duncan the Tall wears his armor trying to compete in his stead. When he gets closer, he winds up running into a bald boy at an inn who he allows to become his squire, and at the time, he just calls himself Egg, but he eventually learns that that is Aegon V, like the heir to the Iron Throne eventually. 
when he becomes a squire though, like when they actually become a pair, he isn't the official heir. Like there's still other brothers that are older than him in the line of succession. Without getting into big spoilers or anything like that, a bunch of drama goes down at the tourney in Ashford, this trial by seven happens, and Aegon's father, Makar, officially allows Sir Duncan the Tall to become part of the royal family and become the official knight to Aegon V. They go on a bunch of adventures together, he eventually ascends the Iron Throne, and once he did, Dunk became his Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, like Brienne did later in the timeline to Bran. So the core of the series is all about the friendship of Dunk and Egg. That's why most people who read the books think of the story as the tales of Duncan Egg. Right now it sounds like HBO's plan is either to release this during the final season of House of the Dragon or like the year right after House of the Dragon ends so that there is no year long break like we don't have to wait three or four years before the next Game of Thrones spinoff or sequel series. George R. Martin also said all the other sequels, prequels, all those other spin-off shows are still in contention, they're still working on them, so we'll probably hear about more of them being greenlighted in future years too. He did make a big deal about clarifying that nothing has actually been canceled, like none of the sequels or prequels that you've heard about have actually been canceled, they're all still being developed, which includes the Jon Snow sequel series. I just did a really big video about that. You can click here for the teaser for that and click here for my House of the Dragon season two teaser video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.